Sun is yet another film from DC Animations. I'm pretty sure this is like the 37th or 38th DC movie that they've made, directed by Sam Liu. It stars Jason Isaacs as the voice of Superman, and this is Superman Red Sun, which is adapted from Superman Red Sun, the comic. It's actually one of my all-time favorite comics. This story basically centers around the premise of what would happen if Superman, you know, the guy that usually crash lands in Kansas, what if Superman instead landed somewhere else? Like, what if he landed in Russia? What if he landed in Moscow in the 1950s? And then he kind of grew up and became part of the Soviet Union. What kind of choices would Superman make? What kind of ideals would he stand for as part of a communist dictatorship or whatever? Like, what would he do? How would he set his mark on the world? How would the other characters be different? That's what that story in the comics explored, and that's what this movie is trying to explore as an adaptation. I feel like DC Animation overall has a pretty solid track record. I feel like, for the most part, even if you don't really like the movie, I feel like you still walk away entertained, like there's still enough good stuff to enjoy about it. I do wish the DC Animation sort of branched out and tried other characters, tried other movies, instead of always reverting back to Batman, Superman, or the Justice League. But I do appreciate that we are getting stories like this, some of the more iconic stories in comics being told in animated form. I mean, hell, if they're not gonna do them in the movies, might as well explore it in animation. Things I liked about Superman Red Sun, uh, I do think that the voice work here is exceptional. Jason Isaacs is perfect as a Russian Superman. It's kind of interesting to see these characters that you know from the comics or other media adaptations, and you're sort of used to characters looking and sounding a certain way. Seeing Superman with that iconic Red Sun outfit, seeing him with a Russian accent instead of like, you know, American or English or whatever you want to call it, obviously gets a little bit of a shock to the system. And I always like stories that take characters that we like and love, are used to seeing them a certain way, and then they portray them in a different way. And that goes for a lot of the other characters in this movie. The movie does take place in kind of an alternate story, an alternate what if timeline, where if Superman were born in Russia and grew up as a part of the Soviet Union, what would happen and what would happen to the other characters? This movie does involve crossovers with a lot of other iconic characters that you find in the comics. The voice work for all of them is pretty spectacular. Jason Isaacs, in terms of the accent, in terms of his delivery, everything is perfect. I love the voice work for Lex Luthor in this movie. Voice work for Lois Lane. Love the voice work pretty much for everyone involved. I also want to single out the composer for the music in this movie. I think his name is Frederick Weedman or Whedon. I, I don't, I can't remember his last name. I know if I say the name Whedon, a lot of DC fans will get triggered because, you know, 2017. Pretty sure it's not that Whedon, and I think he did a really good job with the music. Sometimes in an animated movie, the music is actually something that you really look forward to. It's even more important sometimes in an animated film or a cartoon for the music to be on point, for the music to deliver and to really bring home that emotion, really sell a scene, because obviously it's a cartoon, and I think the musical score here is one of the best that's ever been composed for a DC animated movie. There are some things that they definitely adjust and change. Obviously, it can't be 100% accurate to the comics, and I totally get that. Obviously, you have to adjust just for time and you have to cut down the runtime of a movie like this and so in that sense I feel like some of the changes were necessary and some of the changes did help the flow of the movie a little bit. I wasn't really a big fan of this movie. I wasn't. I, I tried. I really wanted to like it but I just can't bring myself to wrap my arms around it. I'm gonna try to tread lightly here because I know a lot of people have not seen Superman Red Sun. Hell, some of you may not have even read the comic that it's based on. And so in that sense, I have to be careful even when I give positives or negatives because I have to try to avoid spoilers. And you guys know I hate giving out spoilers. I didn't really enjoy this movie and a lot of it has to do with the way that it's adapted and certain plot elements, story elements, and characterization choices that really rub me the wrong way. Like I said, people, I totally get that change is inevitable. I totally totally get that it doesn't have to be 100% accurate. I get that. I'm not a gatekeeper up here whining and complaining. Like, I'm not that old dude on the lawn that's basically like, no, nah, it has to be 100% accurate. Nah, nah, nah. Problem is, in this movie, I feel like a lot of the changes affect the characters and affect the story, affect the plot, affect the themes in a way that actually detract from the story of Red Sun. It's all good if you're making changes that make the movie better. In the comic, themes of progressiveness and communism and capitalism, all of that is explored in a story with all of our favorite characters and it puts them on different sides and in different lights. It makes you kind of see the world through a different lens. And in this movie, the way that certain characters are portrayed, the way that Superman is portrayed at times, the story stuff that they do with Lois and Lex, Wonder Woman in this movie, it's almost insulting what they did to her. Again, no spoilers. I'm not going to tell you what it is. I'm not going to let you know any of that. You have to see the movie or you have to read the comic to know what the hell I'm talking about. This, this, this misses the boat and not like in a, oh, the Titanic iceberg missed the boat and we all get to live kind of thing. That's more like they made a change and then they missed the boat and instead of running into an iceberg, they ran into like a random whirlpool that was just in the middle of the ocean. And it sunk the ship down and everybody died. I'm not saying that to say that I felt like dying while watching this movie, but I'm saying that like as an adaptation, 
adaptation as a film that is trying to adapt a very iconic story. I feel like certain changes and certain things that they did ruined the characterization here. I know that this is an animation style that we're used to, but certain details, the color, the backgrounds, the way that it's drawn, the way that these characters are fluid and move, it all sometimes feels a little bit stiff. It feels a little bit stale. It feels a little bit tired. As someone who hoped that they would keep the essence and the spirit of the comic intact, I feel like they cut corners that actually ended up hurting the story here and hurting the characters. I cannot in good consciousness let that go, so I'm sorry, I wasn't a fan. Red Sun was an all right enough watch, but a disappointing adaptation. I'm gonna put this one in the average place on my channel, The Fortress of Solitude. Tell me what your favorite DC animated movie of all time is. Put that down in the comment section below. Please like and subscribe to the Super Fan Show, and as always, if you like what you see, tell me how you feel, and stay tuned to hear more from the Man of Steel. Peace.